Welcome to the Cornerstone Church Podcast. Thanks for tuning in for another week. We are working our way through the Pilgrim's Progress. We've loved going through it so far. This classic Christian book by John Bunyan, uh, which has helped Christians for decades to follow the Lord and uh, to avoid some of the pitfalls and temptations and dangers every Christian and we hope that you've uh, enjoyed it if you've missed any of the episodes you can catch up on the back catalogue cornerstonechurchkingston.org you can find various other resources there too uh, my name's Tom I'm one of the pastors at the church I'm here with Rory hello Pete hello also pastors and we are here also with Aidan we've got a new a new man in the studio to help us with our with our sound and our tech and our editing so if the quality of these things improves dramatically you now know why that is. In our last episode, um, Christian and Hopeful uh, were in, embroiled, uh, engaged in a, in a long conversation with, uh, with what Bunyan would call false professors, uh, these people who claim to be Christians on their way to heaven, but actually they're, they're hypocrites and charlatans and fakes, and they're exposed for what they are. Um, so we met Talkative and one or two others. And then they went through a, a, a place of ease where they were able to just rest and refresh themselves a bit. Um, and now they're about to face their next their next challenge um and so perhaps either pete or rory you can you can kind of just take us into that and w- what do they see next well they cut co- they come to uh, a little hill and that hill is called luca um <laughs> which is which means money basically but sort of filthy filthy well you always talk i don't know whether people do nowadays but it was always filthy luca right. wasn't it yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's money and things of this world and, you know, gold and that sort of stuff, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's. Uh, I, th- I think it's it's normally got with with bad means, I isn't think so. it? Yeah, and, it's unrighteous wealth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you, you've of, kind of, you've, you've, it's the sort you'd gain by fiddling the books or having dishonest yeah. scales or, yeah. um, you know, gambling at other people's expense or what, you know, it's ill-gotten gain, isn't yeah. it? It's that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. sli- I think even slightly bigger than that, that it is the whole of this world, isn't yeah. it? And it's attraction and it's glitziness. And and this is a, a silver mine, isn't it? So yeah. it's beautifully shiny and it's got all kinds of attractions to it. Uh, mm. Yes, and so the problem the problem with the hill, obviously within the hill, the silver mine's there, but pilgrims come to it to have a look at it. To, they sort of get distracted by it. And what can often happen is that when they get too close to the edge... And, it, and this shows us that they're, it's a bit dodgy money. The deceitful ground breaks and they fall in it. And sometimes that can kill them, uh, and other times it might just maim them. But if they are maimed, Pilgrim, um, Bunyan says that they're never free off the influence of the mind's wound until their dying day. And so it really takes a hold of them and mm. can't really escape the grip of, of Luca. I mean, that's, that's interesting. What, it, what do you think he means by that? You know, because because uh, you know uh, he's saying if you if you've been in, involved in in dodgy money business, mm. you can never get over that. Well, you can. I, th- I think you can definitely you can definitely change or be changed by the Lord and begin a, a new life and start treating wealth properly. Um, but it might be that this side of heaven, you know, if if you've gotten money or gotten rich off other people's expense mm. and you've mistreated and used and abused people there may be consequences that sort of follow you mm. in all of this life you know people either trying to get you back or take you to court or get justice or they mm. want to follow mm. you and hound you and get you back in some way so you might leave a trail of destruction behind you so that even if your own heart has been changed uh you know unfortunately in this fallen world the stuff that we do has ripples doesn't it and, 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 and you may not may, be able to people may may not just trust you even yeah. though you are now trustworthy yeah because there's, there's that isn't there it was one of the things about being an elder in the church is that you're you're not to have been a lover a, of money a lover of money into this sort of filthy lucre stuff and i guess even if you've changed on that um it's it's still if people remember that you've been fraudulent or you've you've done dodgy deals, mm. it's quite hard for for you then to be an elder in the church, yeah. even if there is change in you there. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is, uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to use an illustration, but I don't think it will work. So never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's the that's the imagery, and uh, you know, it's quite visual, isn't it? So you can you can imagine, um, you know, going, you know, if you're on a cliff top walk. Uh, or by the sea or something like that and you you uh you know you sometimes see those signs don't you that say keep away from the edge of the cliff or unstable cliff edge don't go any further um and we all know those warnings uh to stay away and yet there is something heady about being right on the edge of the 
cliff, yeah. isn't yeah. there? You can look down and you feel slightly dizzy, you know, looking how far down it is and you want to be able to get the best view. And so there's something attractive about I, I, I the edge, was on, but I, I was um, on Beachy Head with, yeah. with Anne, my wife, and it's just like that. You've got the signs there. Yeah. And Beachy Head is where people often go to commit suicide. But yeah. there was a whole load of... There was a whole group of, of, of uh, young young people sitting right on yeah. the edge. And it was so horrible. I couldn't even look at it because mm. you just thought, that could go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's it. So that's that's the that's the location. But there's also somebody at the top who's really recommending that pilgrims come over and have a look at this thing. Um, and um, so he, he's trying to persuade people. So so who who is he and what's what's he saying? Um, well, his, his name is Demas, mm. uh, which is a character in the Bible, um, and he's calling people to come and have a look mm. uh, because it, it is beautiful, isn't it? There's there's in one sense, there's nothing wrong in just having a look, but uh, his whole uh, whole point is to come and have a look and you'll fall in, isn't it? So yeah. there's this... I mean, it's interesting. He's described as a gentleman, mm. and it's, he sounds quite uh, like a friendly bloke. He says, hello, friends. Come, mm. and, come and have a look at this. Mm. You mm. want to see something? Come and have a look at this, this little, uh, this remarkable thing. Um, and, and also, th- there's sort of... A truth in it, in one sense. If you get some of this, this, this money, you'll be able to provide for yourself. Yeah. Mm. So he's giving a sort of, he's he's painting over evil, isn't he? But he's saying, you know, you know, there's sensibleness here. You'll, you you won't have to rely on people. You'll provide for yourself. That isn't that a good sort mm. of godly thing to do? Take responsibility for yourself and and that sort of stuff. So it, it looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and Demas is a is a character in the, in the New Testament who we don't know loads about, except that uh, we're told in two Timothy that Demas was at one time a companion of Paul's and had some share in the apostolic ministry, but chose to forsake Paul and Paul's gospel, and um, because he preferred the world or because he fell in love with the world. So what? the circumstances were around that we, we don't quite know but there was something in his life that made him think you know this way of the cross and this message of the cross is actually not bringing the sort of the comfort the wealth the yes. security that i want and he he fell in love with what the world could offer and that seemed to be a very you know troubling and upsetting thing for paul that demas has left him because he loved the world um and so that's who this guy is you know maybe at one time he in fact does it say that he was a pilgrim at what well, or, was not, he on the road not, at no, one not point. in the book, no. but obviously, so, obviously, he was a companion of Paul. You see him in, yeah. in various books sending greetings to other churches. But I think, you know, you look. Paul Paul ends up in prison for the for the gospel, and I don't think Demas wants that. He forsakes him, deserts him, and he loves the world. And the things of the world are are, are often to do with riches, and so that's possibly why Bunyan's decided to use Demas as uh, someone luring people to have a look at uh, Luca. And he's now a salesman for the world, isn't he? Yeah, he's. Uh, so, so that's the message that they hear. And Hopeful is initially quite excited about this, isn't he? So, mm. uh, I think Bunyan says his eyes went wide, and he yeah. just says, "Let's go have a look." <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, it hasn't taken, you know, a great deal to persuade him to to, to go. But this is where uh, we need Christian friends in life, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, people who don't have friends, you know, often go wrong because we we need friends to say brother we are not we are not going yeah. um and 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 here's let's why let's not so stir a step is the original let's mm. not stir a step but keep uh, but still keep on our way yeah i mean christian calls him out calls demas out yeah uh, doesn't he and and uh, this is dangerous and demas tries to say well not very dangerous except for the careless yeah. he, <laughs> but the strange thing is he blushes yeah yeah uh you know because he knows he's lying at that point yeah yeah, so so Christian is not gonna is not gonna be uh, is not gonna be persuaded, um, and then he and then and then he has a a bit of a kind of shouting match with with Demas, doesn't he? Um, what what else does he say? How, how does what are some of the points in the conversation there? Well, I, I think it's quite interesting that um, I mean, Christian Christian goes into Hopeful says we're not when there's no way we're going down this line yeah. if we're 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 rejecting this. Yet yeah, hopeful actually looks over his shoulder behind him. I right. think that's going to be important later on. Um, but actually, he looks back and he thinks, "Well, um, 
think about Mr. Bayern last time. Remember Mr. Bayern loved things of the world yeah. and whatever way the world takes you, he goes that way. He thinks Mr. Bayern and his friends, they're surely going to go for that invitation. Um, uh, Christian's aware. He's, that's why he says to... He says to Demas, I'm not going there. I know. I've heard about this place. People get slain here. People uh, settle for the treasures in the, the mine rather than the treasures uh, ahead in, in glory. And so uh, hopeful then can see, actually, if Mr. Bayern sees this, he's, he's going for it, really. And that's exactly what happens, isn't it? So then when they're a bit further on, they turn around and they see, they see Bayern's. Uh, and they are they go straight away don't they i mean as yeah. soon as they hear about it they're off yeah. and then there's one of these really it, and it's quite a haunting line isn't it that they are you, no one's quite sure what happens to them but all we can say is they were never again seen on the way <laughs> yeah. no. and it's like oh yeah they've met their you know they've met their end and it's uh, it's you know it's killed them the love of money has killed them or the the kind of interest in money and uh, you know we're told that about this this place aren't we so the mine has got an unstable cliff edge yeah. but it's also got these noxious fumes yeah. rising out from deep within the pit of the earth which are which are toxic and poisonous and i guess lull you put you asleep and then like carbon monoxide you never wake up again you know um well it's like those um those sort of fly traps isn't it where the fly comes you know you've got those sort of buckets with juice in has the sort of digestive uh, juices in the in Mm. in the actual plant but the but around the edge is this sweet sort of alcoholic stuff that makes the fly uh you know drunk and then slips and then it, it goes that's exactly what's going on here isn't it but I, I love as well, like, and, and that's that's what, how they see what happens to Mr. Byend. But when Demas can, um, persistently calls mm. to Christian and hopeful, Christian's just absolutely having calls none out. of it. He calls yeah. him out. He says, "Look, I I know who you are because he hasn't actually said his name here. He says you're Demas, yeah, and you're actually an enemy. And I I I, I know that you're trying to uh, lure us with the things of this world. But if we do that, then." We will be ashamed by yeah. the king. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and and, he, and he's, he, he he says you, you know he goes into scripture, doesn't he, and say Gehazi, which is an Old Testament thing we come back to, is your great grandfather, and Judas your father. Yes. Um, I mean it's pretty straight stuff, isn't it? So Judas obviously sold J- Jesus for for money, mm. um, underhandedly, and look what happened. Look what happened to to him. Mm. He, he, he hanged himself. Yeah. So that's the. That's the fumes, isn't it? It, mm. it looked good, uh, 30 pieces of silver, you know. Uh, again, it's, you know, it's exciting to get. And then, of course, yeah. in the end, it, pro- it didn't produce anything and he hanged himself. Yeah, and that's one of the warnings we have in the Bible, isn't it? That it's not money itself that is the root of all kinds of evil, but the love of yeah. money is the root of all kinds of evil. And I think if your heart is is with money and not with the Lord, if that's the God you're serving then there's nothing that you won't do in the end in order to serve your God. There's nothing that you won't sacrifice. Even your best friend, you'd mm. be willing to trade out just for a small amount of money if it's going to get you on in this life. And and so that's the thing. When money is a God, you'll do anything to appease it, serve it, get its blessing. Um, and that's what Judas did. And, um, and, you know, and we so- know in the story of the Gospels, don't we, that, that Judas didn't just sort of fall at the end. Mm. He was he was into money all the way through. He was yes. the treasurer, and we know that he was taking stuff out, and he was you know yeah. lying about uh, being concerned for the poor and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So this was a a, f- a thing that was uh, you know taking him over, and it was the, the, it was slipping around the edge, and he finally mm. falls in the silver mine. Yeah. Hangs himself, mm. and, so, and so Christian really goes for him and says, yeah. "You know, your father's a traitor, hanging yeah. himself, as you say. You deserve no better reward." Mm. And then later on, he's, uh, he goes, "Be assured that when we have an audience with the king, we will tell him of your behaviour. Mm. So we'll we'll speak against you for this, trying to trying to lure us away." Yep. Um, so there's a real, there is a real and warning it, to those people who. And, but he calls his great grandfather Gehazi. Yeah. Let's have, let's have a chat about that because mm. who's Gehazi? Mm. Well, Gehazi is the servant of of Elisha, the prophet of God, and again he's revealed to be a lover of money because uh, Elisha, if you know the story, um, essentially heals Naaman of his leprosy, 
naming off his Elisha money and 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 Elisha refuses that money because he, it's a grace gift. Mm. It's a, it's undeserved favor. It's not paid for yep. your healing. Uh, but Gehazi thinks, well, no, we we want some money here. <laughs> yeah. So after Naaman leaves, he chases after Naaman. He says, uh, actually, Naaman, uh, we've we've changed our mind on the money offer, and if you can yeah. just give us some well, he money. he said the prophet of God had changed his yes, mind. Yes, exactly. It was a lie, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And then he comes back, and it's such a good story, because Elisha's like, oh, where have you been, Gehazi? And Gehazi makes something up, and Elisha's like, I know, by the yeah. way. You're trying to lie to the prophet of God. And so he struck. He struck with what Naaman had, and he's he becomes a leper himself. Yeah. Interesting. So it's a great story, and it just shows Bunyan's, uh, you know, wealth of biblical knowledge, doesn't it? That he loved the Bible and lived in the Bible, and that these stories he's able to bring to bear on all of these different themes. So, like Judas, Gehazi serves as a warning against against that. So they, so that they, like, with that kind of said and that judgment pronounced upon Demas, they, they, they move on, don't they? And let's move to the to the next scene that we want to we want to cover, unless you, unless you feel we've missed anything there. Um, to, well, it's it's, it's, to, it's just applying. Well, it's just applying yeah. that to ourselves, isn't it? Mm. Because that's what you know this, he's trying to do here. Uh, you know, we have got to be. You see, we we we, we do think riches are, are going to bring blessing, don't we? And there's just this warning, isn't there? You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. And Jesus, some, some of Jesus' hardest things, isn't it? Uh, it is, you know, um, uh, you know, the things of this world. Uh, you know, it, what, what, what's it in the parable of the sower? The, the actual uh, it's one a seat of, the, of money, isn't it? One of the mm. weeds that's going to choke you to death. Yeah, mm. is mm. the seat of money. So the trouble is, you know. We're, it's money all around us, isn't it? And yeah. there's lucre all around us. And we, so we really, really have to be careful when we go into this world uh, because, because we can use money. That's the trouble. It's a very useful thing mm. and, and, it's, and it's very helpful. And, and there's not anything wrong with it, but we can fall in love with it mm. far too quickly. That, I think that's what... We've got to be aware of, and I we? think in particular where where we in this in in the UK were so rich, yeah, it's more like the the noxious fumes, so we don't even realise we're loving it, and we don't realise we're depending on it. Uh, but that's the issue: is like, who is your God? Mm. You know, is it um, is it God? Are you relying on God? Yeah, is it is He the answer to your issues, mm. uh, or is it? Oh, I just can I can just pay for that and and I rely on my money. Um, yeah. So I think I think this is really relevant to us particularly because we have so much of it and I think we can grow numb to the fact that we rely on it. Um but it's as you say it's really interesting. Uh, one of the things that I was struck by when we did um our series in Luke a few years back was just how many times Jesus has a go at money. Mm-hmm. And it's all throughout and so it's so clearly something that is easily an idol and uh, we've got to be really really careful with it and james does doesn't he so mm. james you know uh, sort of warns us of money and and those that come into the church that are are rich and because they're rich they're they're to do people aren't they they're the the important people and he it's funny how james does it because he turns it round and he seems to suggest that the poorer people are the blessed people and the rich people are not the blessed people. Yeah. And I think he's trying to show, be careful. Yeah. Be very yeah. careful if you're rich. Well, well, I remember sitting in a, in a sermon in Oxford a few years back and uh, the preacher re- just really um, highlighted that exact thing to us in, in that he said, more people uh, withstand the trial of poverty and persecution than the trial of money in other words like you think about what 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 happens when people have lots of money they go away from christ whereas those in poverty and persecution and hardship they have to clutch to jesus so having money is a trial i I think so and i think we need to say that more in that actually don't see money as just a comfortable thing see it as a trial and, and a test uh, and are you going to are you going to rely we, on it, or are you going to rely we, on? We it? all fall for this because we can say things like, "Well, if the church had, you know, if we had three million, we yeah. could buy that place down the road, mm. and then we could be doing more for God." It's it's, it's so easily to, mm. to to slip around this this mm. mine, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, yeah. 
Good stuff. Right. Well, they move on from there then. And then they see, and Roy, you made reference earlier to uh, hopefuls looking back uh, at the mm. mine. And that, that, that becomes quite significant now, doesn't it? So yeah. then they move on and then they see this, this statue, don't they? This white statue with an engraving yeah. on the head, which initially they can't, they can't read until Christian has a closer look. Um, but, it, but it's a statue of a, of a woman. And uh, they discover, don't they, or... or I can't remember how they find well, out that it's Lot's wife. Yeah, isn't well, it? they um, see it, they see that it's the shape of a pillar, and, and hopeful sees an inscription, but he right. can't quite read it. He's yes. not, he says he's not um, he's not a scholar or enough of a scholar to be able to read it. So Christian examines it, and he's trying to trying to work out what it says, and it says, "Remember Lot's wife, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. remember Lot's wife. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the." This is the story from the Old Testament when uh, when Lot and his family uh, are being rescued from Sodom. So the Lord is going to rain fiery sulphur upon Sodom and Gomorrah for its sin. And uh, and yet in his kindness, the Lord has determined to rescue Lot and his family uh, and his daughters from this place. And so the angels come or the messengers come and they grab them by the hand and they say, get out of here, this place is for it, you know. And so they and so they they leave, you know, they leave and they're running onto the plains of Zor, I think it is, and and that the fiery sulphur is about to rain down. Um, you know, such such a dramatic story. Um, and and Lot's wife, um, in that moment, just turns back, you know, and kind of arcs her head back over her shoulder and looks at this city that she's just been rescued from. And in that moment, she turns she turns to a pillar of salt. And she's, she's, sta- I mean, Jesus as well in, in, the, in the gospel says, remember Lot's wife. And uh, she kind of stands as a, as a warning for all who would look back longingly at the world they've been saved from. Um, and that's really what's going on there. So it's not just that she kind of is thinking, oh, I wonder like, you know, how bad it's going to be. Yeah. The looking back is a sort of a heart divided in a way. It's a sense of, do I really want this new life with God? Do I want to start again in a new land? or actually you know that was you know it's a bit like pliable in one you know he's not you know oh yeah it's all right but you know and so there's a heart issue there and that's what's being warned against um and 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 hopeful knows then you see because he 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 thinks oh my goodness you know that 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 should be me Mm. you know that that could have been me because when i look back at that mine that was what was in my heart as well. I was thinking, have we made the right call here? Yeah. Like, because it may be really good and maybe this would help us get on a bit in the journey. And there's a sort of lust for it in his heart. And he says to Christian, doesn't he, why, like, yeah, why have I been, you know, why when she was turned to salt, when the same sin is alive and well in my heart, have I been spared? You know, what is that about? And, May have a conversation. He, he, I mean, he sees himself even worse than that, really. I mean, mm. Christian says, isn't this a great sight? You know, we've just gone through that. What a timely sight to remind us, you know, what happened here. Yeah. And then, and Hopeful's really, really repentant about it. And he says, there's not much difference between us. In fact, she only had a glance back. Mm. Yeah, I had a real desire to go mm. in and see this mine. And so I think he's blown away. What he's, um, he sees his own sin and he feels that, but he's then blown away by the grace that he wasn't, uh, as he says, petrified as, as Lot's wife. Um, Isn't this exactly how we should hear the word of God, though? It, it, you, 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 we don't sit in judgment of Lot's wife. We see our own hearts, and yeah. then we say, thank you, Lord, that you've given that as an example uh, f- uh, for me to see mm. the grace of Christ. Mm. So those two things are always, always good, aren't they? To see our own sin, but actually see the grace of Christ that that he's taken away that sin. And that's how we should be listening, isn't it? So yeah. we shouldn't be offended at the Lot's wife thing. We should be, yeah, gosh, yeah. I mean, she deserved it. I deserve it even more, but the grace of Christ has saved me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's another story in the New Testament about Ananias and Sapphira in the early church. And when things, uh, when the gospel is really taking hold in the world and, and people are being generous and they're giving to the church, uh, these two want to kind of give the impression that they're being mm. super generous, but they actually lie to the apostles and they lie to the Holy Spirit about what they're doing and how much they're giving. And it's nothing, it's nothing wrong with how much they were giving. It's that they lied in in order to give the impression that they were being really generous when they weren't. And they're struck dead in the yeah. early church. I mean, they both of them dropped down and, um, you know, great fear comes upon the whole community. 
and and you do think of that and you think yeah well you know that that sin has been alive and well in my own life yes. you know i've done that yeah. i've done that but the lord has preserved me yes. for some reason and so now why that is well that's down to the sort of the mystery of god's grace and providence and you know we can't always say ah it was them there and not yeah. there but i think you're right like it should make us think if he wanted to god could have exposed me publicly for all kinds of things and finished me you know um but he hasn't and so i'm going to put this to death by god's help you know while I, while he's preserved me at the very least i want to do what i can to yes. squash this in my own life well um, and christian's really helpful because he says let's let's you know take stock of it as you say and then see how we can profit for it and i, I love it because he says you know lot's wife escaped one judgment she escaped the the burning sulfur of uh, sodom Yet she did not. So uh, she she had a different judgment, and so we've got to be ca- step step carefully. And then mm. it's brilliant because hopeful then riffs off that really and says, yeah, that this is a real warning that we should shun her sin uh, and, and understand that judgment comes. And then and and mentions Korah, Dathan, and Abiram mm. um, from the story of Numbers, which is a, an amazing story. It's a scary story where they they oppose God's pr- uh, prophet in Moses. Uh, and uh, you know, pick your side basically, and the, and and if you know God's for me, we'll be okay. If God's not for for me, them, then what will happen is the earth will split into half, and they'll be swallowed up by the earth, them and their families. And and so I think they, they they're they're able to reflect on when people oppose God and have sinned, judgment comes upon them. Not always straight away. No. But sometimes there are moments where there is judgment and I must take heed of the judgments on people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, because if I'm going to treat sin lightly, yeah. this can be... this can be That's right. And this does happen, doesn't it, in ministry life, you know, and it is a caution to us that there, there might be in any congregation, say, 15 or 20 people who have the same sort of habitual sin that they're fighting. Mm. But sometimes just one of them, that something public happens, doesn't it? And it, yeah. and it comes out and... You know, why exactly it was that person and were they worse than anyone else? I don't think it's necessarily helpful to think like that. But I, I just think the Lord, sometimes there is a public revealing uh, and it's, it's a, it is a shot to the congregation, isn't it? To say, look, yeah, come on, we've all got to take this seriously. We've all, we, we can't mess around with sin because no, no. this is what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. Um, I love the way, I mean, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, Christian is trying to work out, you know, how is it? That that running away from judgment like Lot's wife, and yet you you would turn your heart towards the place that's being ju- judged, mm. and he he's trying to work that out, and he says how 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 could I compare this, you know? And there's these lovely <laughs> uh, uh, pictures that is so bunion yeah. that, of, of I, I it's like he says it's like a a pickpocket. Uh, you know, in a in a in a judgment case, there's the judge judging someone for stealing, and yet there's the pickpocket um, <laughs> yes. in the courtroom, sort of pick, you know, picking the pocket. And then he says, it, "It's it's it's like uh, someone stealing purses mm. when uh, someone's being hanged." Yeah. Um, and I guess that was a real th- thing in Bunyan's day. You could go to see a hanging because a person had been stealing, yeah. and there's the there's the pickpockets there, yeah. you know. <laughs> Doing that very sin because <laughs> because we're not taking the judgment seriously. No, no. So the whole point is that we are to take it seriously, and so when we look at Lot's wife, it's not oh what a what an ugly woman she was. What yeah. a what a sort of. But that's in, that's right, isn't it? And you and you hear it just in our common language. You know, whenever something happens in culture, like perhaps there's a there's a terrible crime committed in an area, or there's a murder, or something, uh, and they interview some of the local residents. You know, yeah. what they'll often say is, "I just can't believe." You know, this is a good area. This, you know, yeah. I, it, I can't believe it's happened on my doorstep. This no. sort of thing never happens around yeah. here. And. Uh, you kind of think, why? Why would you presume that? But um, and of course, it does happen, doesn't it? And these are the things we need to remember. Like we may think it could never happen to us, but it could. It could. And uh, so there's a moment where hopeful is just saying, "My goodness, that that should be me there," and uh, and it's not. Um, so um, so then they that that's it, isn't it? Then they they kind of leave behind the uh, the statue. Um, and next then part the, the story, next part, and then they have, and we we probably won't cover it 
you know, at any length, but they, they then they have another sort of period of refreshment, don't yeah. they? they? They find these waters, the rivers of the water of, of life, yeah. and they're able to drink and rest and refresh. And So the Lord is very good, isn't he? And after every trial and difficulty, there's often a time just to enjoy God's grace and drink and re- refresh. Um, and so next time we'll, um, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll see what happens next. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, as I said at the start, cornerstonechurchkingston.org. You can go on the website and find other podcasts and blogs and sermons. And uh, any feedback that you've got about this, uh, do, do write in and tell us what you think or what you'd like us to cover. And uh, we'd, we'd appreciate any, any of that. So, uh, yeah, see you next time.